Hi guys, welcome back to the layout. I'm David. Um, today's video is going to be about wiring up ExpressNet for the lens controller. I'm running the lens LL LH100, sorry, handset, and the lens LZV100 base station is built into my baseboards over here, out of the way. Now to wire up ExpressNet, all you really need is a four core wire. There's only four wires you need, and these five pin DIN connectors. Now I got these from CPC Final, they're a couple of pence each, they're really cheap and they just plug directly in to the controller. Like so. So if I mount these in the baseboards I could just plug the controller in. Now what you'll notice is the loco is now going past. My handset, look, no magic tricks, is not plugged in. The locos don't stop, they actually run from the base station and you can have multiple throttles, different styles and you don't need them in for the layout to run. So you can set things up, get things running, and walk to somewhere else where there'll be another one of these sockets and plug back in. So I've got an armchair over there, for example. I've got my uh, desk in the middle, which is going to be behind the back scenes. Um, I want to put one sort of on the front of the layout, somewhere in the middle. So you can be all around. And at the moment, I've just got one throttle. Maybe I'll buy more and have them plugged in in different places. So we're going to go to the table and have a look at how to wire this up. Okay guys, so I've got my manual here for the lens system. This is the one that I got with it because I got it second hand. And you can see this is for the dispatcher's throttle. Now that's pretty useless to us. So the manual you actually need is for the base station. Now I didn't have one, but I've printed out um, one from the internet, very useful. I've just realized it's for version 3.6. I don't at the moment have the 3.6 chip in either my base station or my handset. Um, it's just an upgrade chip, it costs about 30 pounds. I've taken the controller apart to look at what's in there and how simple it is. It's really easy, all you do is you pull it out with a pair of tweezers and put in the new one. But I don't really see the point in upgrading at the moment. Now, if you flick through, there's lots of wiring instructions. We've got the initial connection, I've already done all that, that's wired in. You can see on the back here you've got ExpressNet, um, and that fits the controller from the factory. What we're doing is we're effectively replacing that socket with loads of our own all around the layout. And there is a section on how to wire that up. Okay, so this is a section on the ExpressNet communication network. And as you can see, it can be up to one kilometer <laughs> long and support up to 31 simultaneous input devices. So it is quite powerful. Um, you do a lot with it. Now, we want the section on wiring it up. So the ExpressNet plug it's saying here is LMAB. That's the uh, five pin DIN connector bus. Keep flicking through. I know there is a wiring diagram in here. Okay, ExpressNet plug LMAB. The LMAB plug is designed for more permanent ExpressNet connections. The wires that turn off A and B are used to exchange data. So you've got two data wires which just send the DCC signals back and forth. And the wires are L and M plus and minus I believe, supply power to ExpressNet devices. So that's 300 milliamps of power to both ExpressNet uh, and the power station interface. You can add your own auxiliary 12 volt regulated DC if necessary. Right, so for wiring this up, some uh, networks actually require probably slightly thicker cable. If I just reach into my drawer here, these are my dropper wire cables. And some networks may require something like that. If they're, for example, the NCE power cab, if you have the basic power cab, you can have uh, a cable on that, which is sort of an ethernet cable, but that actually takes the track power, so you need a slightly thicker cable for it. For our case, for ExpressNet, all you really need is this stuff, ethernet. So I've got a 100 meter reel here of Cat5e, uh, it's just what I could find cheapest on eBay. It's £12 for 100 metres, that's a very good deal. Uh, you have to keep your eye out, it can get expensive, but I found that deal, which is great. 
And all we need to do is wire the, these up with ethernet. Okay, so I've flicked a bit further through the manual. We've got to the section called installing ExpressNet. So it goes through the information and it talks about the five pin DIN connectors. And on the back, there's this useful diagram that says pin assignments. So if I hold this the right way up, you can see uh, the connection here, if I get some to point with, the connection here at the top, that is the sort of connection to the outer casing. That's not used. Um, we don't need that. And also the connection here, the center pin is not used. Pins that are used are the outer two here, which are these two, the outer two here, which are these two. So you're only using four out of the five pins. Quite usefully, it's also labeled L-A-B-M as well. So remember the plug on the back of the controller. Uh, we're just plugging into that directly and you can create your own color code. You don't necessarily have to follow what's in here. So what I have here, this is actually the connector that goes into the back of the lens controller. And all we're going to do is go from the back of the controller to here, ensuring we keep LMAB and we put it in LABM into the back of this. Okay, here's another useful diagram showing you can have a sort of bus wire and you can have branches coming off it so long as they don't feed back in. That's what this is trying to say. So you can come here, go all around your layout. You can have another one branching off maybe to a separate baseboard or something, but don't join it back in. And it also says for longer express net networks, uh, you should connect a resistor across A and B, which I believe are the two signal wires at the very end, 120 ohm resistor. Now I don't actually have um, a resistor to wire in. I'm hoping it'll be fine. If not, I'll, I'll order one as my network's not going to be too long. Again, it said up to a kilometer. I'm definitely not going that far. I'm going about five meters, 10 meters. So what we've learned so far through going through all of this is all you need to do is get LMAB coming out of the controller and then you have you have LABM on here and that's that you daisy chain them together all around the layout so I've got four I'm putting in today you just daisy chain them together for example uh, L to L to L to L all along the layout and then if you've got a particularly long one I'm going to try without you just put a resistor across A and B at the end right so let's get started installing these okay so the first connection that has to be made is to the back of the command station so what we need to do is plug this in now the way I've wired it up I've used a twisted pair for each of the connections just so there's more copper per connection it does actually show in the instructions, interestingly enough, so I'll try to get that in frame, um, using a twisted pair, so two twisted pairs, so one twisted pair for plus and minus, and one twisted pair for plus data and minus data, but I haven't done that, um, just I thought then I'd be wasting conductors in this wire. So I've just used a brown and its corresponding white wire for positive, blue and its corresponding white for negative, orange and its corresponding white for data A, and green and its corresponding white for data B. Now all we have to do with those, uh, I can't really show you the back because of the way I've got the controller mounted, but the back of it's up here. Just find the LMAB socket and plug it in. It's probably best to do this with the transformer off so I'll just they are stopped my train a bit suddenly um yeah it's probably best to do the controller off but if I bring the camera up you can see there it's just plugged into the back of the command station 
The next thing to do will be run this around the layout and cut it to size. Now, this isn't necessary, but for my layout, we've got chocolate block joins at each of the baseboard joins. Uh, so you can see all my points wiring and my buses. But what I'm actually going to do is just bypass... Oh, sorry about that. Just bypass these and just pin them. Um, the layout's not actually necessarily separable. It's just so I can move it in a couple of years' time. And I didn't want to have to rewire all the main wires. I don't, however, mind uh, rewiring the express net. It's a really quick job. It's only a couple of wires. Um, and in the future, when I, I'll just cut them and probably join them back together, terminal box or something. But for now, just a solid connection. Saves me money on these joinable things. And it also makes a more solid data connection through this ethernet. Works better when they're all inside the ethernet in their twisted pairs and not being split apart every four feet. Okay, so you now join me over where the first of these connectors is gonna go by the control panel. So you can see the wire coming down there. You can see that's where I've got the command station mounted. That'll all be tidied up when I put a fascia board on. Now where I want to put this first connection, I think is gonna be hmm, probably, probably actually just up here. I think that makes sense. So I'm, all I'm going to have to do is drill through this bit of wood. You can see there's a nice gap behind it. I've got this mount here that I 3D printed. I've got a couple of these 3D printed. I just designed them myself. They fit the controller quite nicely. Or the hook on the back. Just going to have to drill a hole up here to mount this in. Okay guys, so as you saw there, I've just drilled a hole didn't actually have a hole, uh, a drill bit big enough. So I've actually used a smaller drill bit several times and then fold it around. It now fits. It's quite a snug fit, but it needs to be so you can't see the hole around the edge of the metal. Again, I'm putting a plywood fascia or a hardboard fascia around the whole layout. So that fits quite nicely in there. And the idea is, the idea being, if I just put that in, obviously we can come along with a controller, plug in, do whatever we want, then unplug and go somewhere else. Right, so the next step with this is to cut the wire to size and solder them to the connections. So I'm just going to cut through here. Just feed it through the back there. Right, so that's the wire coming from the command station. Now what we also need to do, is I'm just going to feed through from the reel, because I don't know how long I want this next wire. As we're daisy chaining them, what we need to do is put in another wire. And what we've got to do is solder these in the same configuration as the instructions say. Okay, so I've just twisted these together. Now you can better see what I meant by the fact I'm using the colour and their corresponding white wire as if it was one wire. Uh, so if I just pull this out, for example, the green and its corresponding white are twisted together, same with the orange, blue and brown. Now, this is not necessarily the right way. You just use uh, whatever wire you've got in your own colour scheme, as long as you keep it consistent around the whole layout. Now all I'm doing is just twisting together all the green wires, so the one coming from the controller and the one going to the next panel. The orange wires, they're my sets of data. Just twisting them together. And then we've got blue as well. Okay, so I've just twisted together all of the corresponding wires coming from the controller and going to the next panel. That's the start of our daisy chain. Right, so now what I've got to do is solder these together, so tin them, and then tin all of the connections on the DIN connector.
Okay, so as you can see there, I've just tinned all of these uh, wires. I just I tinned all of the wires and I tinned all the connections on the back of the DIN connector. Now they are slotted, meaning you can um, feed the wire through and then solder it. But as I've got a big uh, twisted group of wires, they're not really going to fit through the slot, so I've just done them separately. Now all we need to do is remember we've got LA, so that's the L for live, A is our first data, then we've got B, our next data is on the other side, and M. So I'm going to start with my live, I've just colour coded this, how you would colour code um, mains, so live is brown. And then we have M for ground. I assume it's based off some sort of German as the letters don't make much sense. And it is a German controller company. Probably be better doing this in a third hand but I don't have one. Okay, so we've got the 12 volts plus and minus on, then it's just our datas A and B that go in the bottom middle two pins. Okay, so they're soldered now. If I give it a close up. So they're just done corresponding with the wiring diagram. Um, again, I'd probably be better heat shrinking these, but I don't have any correct size heat shrink. And the connections are pretty sturdy, so I don't think they'll be able to contact each other. And they're going to be well inside the wood. So what you want to do here is the controller connection. It's got an arrow for top and top. I can see it this way up. Then you just want to tuck the wires in, observing that they're not touching each other. It will look good to me. And then that's nice and safe inside the wood now, so nothing's going to touch them, and the connections are really solid, so you won't, they won't touch each other. You probably should be better off insulating them though. I just don't have anything to hand. Okay, so I'm just testing the socket. I've got it powered on. I'm controlling the local fine. There's no error light on here. The loco is responding really well. If I press the emergency stop, oh, are we? Straight away it stops, no problem, no short circuits or anything. And if I unplug the controller, as expected, the loco proceeds around the layout. You probably can't see it, but I, I can and it's definitely moving. I'm just going to slow it down to a stop. Right, so now I've just got to replicate this all around the layout in various places. And that'll be the first install of the ExpressNet bus. Okay guys, so you've just seen me install uh, most of the sockets around the layout. I finished putting the last one in off camera. I had to go and get uh, my Chinese takeaway. 
as it is contactless delivery had to rescue it from the driveway before it got too cold um so yeah i've had my takeaway watched the film and i'll come back out here now just to finish off for the day we've got a train running around obviously the controller's not plugged in great thing about this i uh, as soon as i plug the controller in it gets 12 volts to the handset as well as the signal so i can uh, speed up that loco well, slow it down. No real issues, emergency stop. All works perfectly. If I unplug it, walk off somewhere else. We uh, have no dramas, they keep going. Exactly what I was after. Didn't end up needing a resistor in the end. Um, just daisy chain them with the ethernet and it worked completely fine. Uh, I've used different fixing methods for most of them. So I started off with the brass screws um and then over there i use some little black screws i found over here i've used some roofing nails little tacks and on the inside i've actually used little uh stainless steel not stainless steel galvanized steel tacks and i think these are the answer um i just wanted to find sort of the neatest way that and i'm running incredibly low on these uh, brass screws so I use them to do all of the baseboards as long, along with a load of other projects. Um, I think that those screws are the way for mounting these. What I've been doing is next to each of them, uh, on this one, I don't know which side I'd like it, probably reachable from the armchair really. Yeah, so, probably, whichever makes more sense. I think it makes more sense here. Um, what I've been doing is putting on these brackets. Now I designed this myself. There's loads of designs around for ones that hold the entire controller. Um, you can buy them retail as well from Hatton's for about six pounds. But I noticed the back of them has got this big clip that usefully clicks into your jean pockets, for example, and it uh, hangs off of things. That's not very secure if it hangs off there, it falls off really easy. So I designed this little uh, 3D printed clasp that I printed myself on my homemade printer and it perfectly fits like that so the controller can hang from the side of the layout. So all it is is a sort of shape like that, two screw holes. If anyone happens to have a lens uh, LH100, that's what I've designed it for. Uh, message me and I can get you the CAD file completely free. Uh, or I can print one for you and I'll probably sell it to you somehow. So I've just been screwing these brackets next to the plug socket, which means. There we are. I can have the plug socket hook on the controller and that can sit there or I can walk off. I can reach well over the middle of the layout from here. If I can pass the camera, I can reach round to the end of the scenic section basically in this direction. Most importantly, I can sit in my armchair here and control the trains. Right, so I think that works wonderfully. My controller can now be plugged in all around the layout. I've got my little hooks. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next time I think we'll be doing a sort of layout update. Excuse me, all the western gets carried away there. Uh, let's just bring her to a stop. Okay, yeah, next time I think I'll be doing a layout update. I've been trying to do build videos as they go. Um, I lost a bit of footage for the baseboard video, I think. I'm, I've yet to edit uh, the second baseboard video. But yeah, the next thing will be a layout update. And then after that, I'm hoping to order some ID vaccines. So that's what's coming up. Thanks for watching.